Denon. Japanese electronics manufacturer specializing in hi-fi and high-end equipment for professional and home use. The history of Denon began in the first decade of the 20th century when Frederick Whitney Horn, an American entrepreneur living in Yokohama, Japan, who was importing phonographs and wax cylinders, decided to start his own production. His American-Japanese business was named Nichibei Chikuonki Seize Kabushiki Geisha, abbreviated to Nichibei. Almost from the very beginning, the company had a separate division, which was engaged in the promotion of various novelties from the world of audio. In the early years of the business, the company went through a number of renames and reorganizations. In the second decade of the 20th century, the joint Stark company Nichiku, which at that time was the main project of Frederick Horn, launched a factory that combined the production and centralized distribution of turntables and records. At first the company produced single-sided records, and from 1915 double-sided records. In 1919, J.R. Gary took over management of the business, and Horn left Japan. Gary, who was Horn's partner, was doing quite well. By the mid-twenties, Nichiku had already managed to buy several significant Japanese record brands, which made the business even stronger. It is worth noting that the government actively supported local companies by imposing high import taxes. This policy helped Nichiku in its rapid growth and transition to more progressive ways of recording. In 1927, a large stake in Nichiku was bought by Columbia, or rather its American and British divisions. As a result, Nichiku was renamed Nippon Columbia. For years later this association came under the control of EMI but by 1935 Nippon Columbia was nationalized by the Japanese government. All management of the project went to government-appointed managers. The emergence of the Denon brand itself was the result of a series of events connected with constant reorganizations in the company. In the late 30s, the special gramophone division called Japan Denki Onkyo, which was part of the nationalized Nippon Columbia, decided to be renamed Denon, combining the words Denki and Onkyo, which means electricity and sound. It should be noted that Japan Denki Onkyo had nothing to do with Onkyo of Osaka, a brand that is also very well known in the audio world. One of the most important events for Denon in the early stages was an order from NHK, a broadcasting company that worked for the government. The order was to produce a record of the Emperor's capitulation message. A DP the 17K recorder was used for the recording. After the end of World War II, Nippon Columbia, Denon and NHK began to grow even faster. It was partnering with large companies and taking part in high-profile projects that helped Denon reach the consumer audio market. The first moving coil record head was released in 1951, and the most famous Denon product created in cooperation with NHK was the DL-103MC cartridge, which was released a few years later. This cartridge is still produced in different variations and has become a kind of benchmark. In the 50s and 60s Denon began to actively explore the market of audio equipment. The development of the devices for playing records was engaged in the department in Maitaka. A second factory in Kawasaki produced reel-to-reel -reel and cassette recorders, radios, musical instruments and other equipment. Among other things, the company worked with NHK on a project that would eventually change the world of audio. This was research into PCM audio coding. 
1967, a prototype system for monaural digital recording based on a VCR was created. In 1969, a stereo version with the parameters 13 bits 47.25 kHz appeared. Expensive high-precision ADC DAC systems from analog devices, originally designed for military radar, were used to convert analog signals to digital and vice versa. In 1971, Denon engineer Takeaki Anazawa made the world's first commercial digital audio recordings. The albums were the world of Stomu Yamashita and something of Steve Marcus and Jairo Inagoki. These recordings were released in 1972 on vinyl. Denon representatives claimed that the digital approach achieved a quality superior to traditional analog tape recorders. Both albums were recorded in one run, with no subsequent editing, which required the highest precision equipment. In 1972, Denon introduced the DN023R multi-channel PCM recorder. The device had eight channels and recorded audio at a sampling rate of 47.25 kHz, converting it to a low-frequency signal that was recorded onto a two-inch tape of a Shiba, later Hitachi, black and white VCR with four heads. The system weighed several hundred kilograms and consisted of three components, a tape puller, a monitor, and a signal processor. This equipment already allowed for editing of the material. Among the first recordings on the DN023R was a recording of Mozart's string quartets. Subsequently, Nippon Columbia released several more vinyl records recorded with this device. The next version of the recorder, the DN023RA, was modernized to reduce its weight and dimensions, making it suitable for field sessions in Europe. In 77, Billboard magazine honored Denon with the Trendsetter Award for its contribution to the development of digital sound recording. PCM coding techniques, which the company actively researched, soon became the basis for the mass adoption of compact discs. In the 1970s, however, Denon did not limit itself to experimenting with digital technology, focusing on traditional devices. One of the company's key successes of those years was direct drive motors for record players. For example, the DP5000 model, launched in 1971, provided a stable rotation speed thanks to magnetic sensors, which allowed to achieve a minimum level of detonation. Such abilities were unattainable for devices with passive drives. The speed control system used in the DP5000 also found its way into the DH710 reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. This reinforced Denon's position as a company that pays the utmost attention to the accuracy of its products. Despite its serious achievements, Denon is not considered the founder of the revolutionary CD audio format. However, the company was the first to release a professional CD player in the form of a stand, the DN3000, in 1981. A year later, in 1982, in cooperation with Hitachi, the first home player DCD-2000 with vertical disc loading was presented. Subsequently, Denon switched to the use of a traditional horizontal tray. Not to be overlooked is the fact that Denon introduced its own 20-bit digital filtering algorithms, providing more accurate processing of data from compact discs. The peak of this trend was Alpha Technology, introduced in 1993. It was used in the famous DAS-1DAC, which worked in conjunction with the top-of-the-line DPS-1 CD transport. 
this transport fully demonstrated Denon's engineering prowess. The multi-layer cabinet, air-cushioned copper chassis on oil dampers and brass stabilizer were at that time the pinnacle of the company's audio equipment design. By the way, Denon also created some of the most interesting portable CD players in its time. The DCP-150 was equipped with a pair of AD-1868 18-bit R2R DACs, which provided high-fidelity audio processing. In 1993, Denon released digital workstations capable of 20-bit precision. The extra for bits minimized quantization errors when mixing 16-bit digital tracks, which improved the quality of the final material. By the mid-90s, the company improved the parameters of its multi-channel studio equipment to 24-bit 96 kHz, which paved the way for work with media in 5.1 format. It was on multi-channel audio that Denon concentrated its efforts in the late 90s and early 2000s. As early as 96, the company made six-channel recordings of several classical concerts, including music by Chopin and Beethoven. In 1997, the company released its first DVD player, the DVD-2000. At the same time, Denon equipped its own studio for multi-channel sound recording and began releasing symphonic music on DVD at its Atlanta plant. The company also began producing super audio compact discs. During that period, in addition to sound, Denon ventured into video. The company became one of the first manufacturers to offer AV processors and receivers with the latest Dolby Digital and DTS decoders and their THX extensions. In 2004, together with Silicon Optics, the company introduced the Realta HQV, Hollywood Quality Video, video chip used in the DVD A115 player. In the 2000s, Denon began the process of moving its major divisions to the United States, as the country was and still is the center of the film industry. In 2008, the Denon DVD A1UD became the first all-in-one Blu-ray, SACD, and DVD audio player. For almost 10 years this player was a reference for this type of products. And years later, Denon introduced the AVRX8500H 15-channel AV receiver, equipped with Dolby Atmos decoders and the proprietary HEOS multi-room system. This product also set a new benchmark. In the 21st century, almost all of Denon's shares were transferred from debt-ridden Nippon Columbia to the control of Ripplewood Holdings, an American investment holding company. The remaining shares, about 2%, were held by Hitachi. In 2002, the Denon brand, as well as Marantz, became part of the D plus M holding company. Apart from them, the holding later included other well-known names of the hi-fi industry such as Boston Acoustics and Macintosh. At the time, 68.6% .6 of D plus M was owned by Ripplewood, while 14.7% was held by Philips, the former owner of Marantz. In 2014, the Denon Professional, Marantz Professional and Denon DJ divisions were separated from the D plus M structure and sold to US-based InMusic, which also owns the NumArk, Akai and Aelsys brands.
In 2017, the D Plus M holding company was fully acquired by US based Sound United. At that time, Sound United already owned brands such as Poke Audio and Definitive Technology. In 2022, Sound United itself and its brands, including Denon, were bought by Massimo, considered one of the world's largest manufacturers of innovative medical devices. As of 2024, the Denon brand remains owned by Massimo, and a separate entity, Massimo Consumer Denon, has been created to manage the brand. The production of Denon products continues in our time. As before, the company pays great attention to the hi-fi sector, producing turntables, amplifiers, mini-systems, and other components. In a separate category are AV receivers, where both affordable models and top-end devices like AVC AH1 with support for multi-channel audio format 15.4 are offered. One of the most interesting recent novelties for audiophiles is the PMA3000NE integrated amplifier, which received the most advanced amplification and performance optimization systems. The model has a two-cycle UHC MOS amplifier in a two-stage differential circuit and proprietary Ultra AL23 digital signal processing. At the same time, the amplifier has an audiophile analog mode source direct function, which completely eliminates the influence of the digital section on the sound. It should be noted that the base for PMA3000NE was the anniversary PMAA110, which was released in 2020 in honor of the 110th anniversary of the brand. The production of both models was handled by the Shirakawa factory. In this way, Denon continues to maintain its Japanese production facilities, to this day, not moving them to other Asian countries where component assembly is less costly. Also among Denon's major achievements in the last few years is the great success in the field of multi-channel wireless audio. The company is constantly developing new and improving existing technologies for wireless audio transmission. This applies to the proprietary HEOS multi-room system as well as other more recent developments. In 2023, Denon joined Neura, an Australian company specializing in modern audio personalization technologies. These are digital technologies that tailor the sound to the individual listener by analyzing the structure of the ears. First of all, of course, we are talking about headphones. Well, that concludes the video. As always, I ask you to like and subscribe. Don't forget the sponsorship and the thank you button. It will motivate me to create more videos. Thank you all. See you next time.